This may seem strange, but this language is the first one in this series to include actual letters in the code. Yay! This language is called Befunge. Befungy. Be sponge? Befunge, that's what I'm going with. And it was made by Chris Presley to be as difficult to compile as possible. So basically, the opposite of brain. There are two flavors of Befunge Befunge 93 and Befunge 98. I will be using Befunge 93, but I might make another video talking about Funge 98 in the future. The word Befunge was originally a typo in a chat room of the word before. Now, you may be asking, how do you misspell before like that? And. well. Uh, I don't know. Now instead of just listing the commands, I'll show you what they do by example. Here's a Hello World program. What's going on? Why is all the text backwards? What is- Alright, calm down. You calm? Good. The first thing this program does is push the string Hello World onto the stack. Since the top value on the stack is used first, and we want to print the letter H first, and the letter E second, and so on, we put them in backwards, with the last character we want to print being on the bottom. This part here is a loop. These arrows change the direction of the program. Yes, the direction. Befunge programs are run on an 80 by 25 character grid called the playfield. The program counter starts by moving to the right, but it doesn't have to. It can move in any orthogonal direction. Anyway, the underscore pops the top value of the stack and checks if it's a zero. If it is, it changes the direction to right, ending the loop. Otherwise, it changes the direction to left. The vertical bar also performs the same operation, but it sets the direction to down if the value is zero, and up if it is anything else. The comma pops and outputs the top value of the stack as an ASCII character, and the at symbol ends the program. Wait a second! This program doesn't work! It only outputs L O, not hello world! Why did you lie to me like this? I was just about to get to that. Since the underscore pops a value off the stack, and we need that value for later, we can duplicate it by using a colon. That's better! Now tell us how to do it correctly the first time from now on. Um... okay. So yeah, don't forget to put the colon into the text outputting structure. Basically, this structure outputs whatever is on the stack as text, and then it starts moving to the right from this point. Anyway, the add or subtract program has now become a full-blown calculator! Ah! No symbols! Calm down, I'll explain them. Basically, the first thing we have is a text outputter that outputs the title of the calculator. This was done because I wanted to, and there's no real reason for it. The next part shows another way to push values onto the stack, by using digits. This pushes a 5 to the stack, a 2 to the stack, and multiplies them so we have 10. Why 10? Because 10 is the ASCII code for a new line, which we output here. The tilde asks for the user to input a character, which will let us know what operation to perform. And this won't include multiply or divide! <laughs> Actually, it does. Anyway, it first pushes and multiplies 6 and 7 to get 42, which happens to be the ASCII code for the asterisk. It then subtracts 42 from the user's input. How are the values subtracted or divided in Befunge? Is it Pete style or Whitespace style? 10! 9! 8! Hurry it up already! It's Pete style, with the first operation popped being on the right of the operator. Anyway, if the value of the input minus 42 is 0, it will then ask for two integers using the AND symbol, multiply them, and output it as an integer with the period. If the value isn't 0, it continues going. It then tries subtracting one more, to check if the user inputted a character with the value of 43, which is a plus. It then does the exact same thing as a multiplication, but with the addition instead, therefore doing something completely different. If the value still isn't 0, it will instead go in the opposite direction. This number symbol will cause the program to skip the next instruction, which in this case is the minus right here. It will then subtract two more, checking if the user inputted the minus character with its value of 45. If the value finally equals zero, it will ask for two numbers, subtract them, and then output the result. Otherwise, it asks for two numbers, divides them, and outputs the result. Anyway, another thing that makes Befunch weird is the fact that the code can edit itself while it's running. In this program, the letter G- FINALLY I FOUND YOU! TOLD YOU I'D BE BACK! Oh god... Check me out! I got the new port of Oxford! Now I can travel to your world and back as I please! Who are you? This is my Befunge playfield, idiot! No one sits foot in here without my permission! NOBODY! Except Creaturey. And Carl the Cayman. And the entire viewing audience. 
but not you. You're still not allowed. Uh, did you just imitate me on something that just happened and that you didn't even see? Grr. I hate it when people imitate me. Also, you know who I am. Don't you? How do you not remember? I was here two videos ago. I'm Junior Trooper, and I'm here to make your life a living nightmare. Oh. Okay. Where was I? Oh, yeah. The letter G in Bfunge is a git command. It pops the top two values and uses them as the Y and X coordinates. The character at that location is then pushed onto the stack as its ASCII value. The interpreter that I was using Bfunge, I mean, before I made this video, screws up this command, using the X and Y coordinates in the wrong order. The Y coordinate is supposed to be on top, and the X coordinate is supposed to be below it. Because of this, I will be using a different interpreter for now on. The backslash swaps the top two values on the stack. What? Are you ignoring me? Now, while reading specific characters from the program's code is already pretty weird, the put command, which is made using the letter P, allows the program to modify itself. It pops three values and uses them as the Y coordinate of the cell, the X coordinate of the cell, and the character to put into that cell. It then puts the character into the cell, replacing anything that was in there originally. So, with these values here, it would replace this 8 right here with an A. Okay, first, you steal my lucky penny, then you imitate me, and then you ignore me. Are you trying to make me angry? Because it seems like you are. Now, I'm pretty sure you're all dying to know what this program does. Well, it does this. What? Hey, I could use this. I mean, why did you do that? Alright, you asked for it. Unless you can create a 99 bottles of beer program in less than 40 seconds, I'm deleting your channel. Timer starts now. <sighs> Here we go again. White box! Anyway, I'm pretty sure you all know what a 99 bottles of beer program does. If you don't, it prints this song to the screen. Anyway, the first thing we do is push the number 99 to the stack. Then, we duplicate it, output it, and push a zero. Why do we push a zero? Because it will make sure that our value isn't accidentally outputted as an ASCII character, since it will stop the text output loop when it detects a zero. Because it duplicates, we need to discard the extra zero by using the dollar sign. We basically do this every time it outputs a new line, and each line is separated by... a... new line. Finally, at the end, we check if there are any more bottles left, and if there are, we subtract one and loop back around. DONE! You know I can talk from behind this white box, right? Anyway, let's see how this goes. By the way, if I see one mistake, which I probably will, I mean, it says law at no read for set lob, those aren't even real words, then your channel's going down. Forever! <laughs> Uh, can you, I don't know, speed this up? No, but I can slow it down. Oh, please, no! Okay, I won't. But even at this speed, since it takes around 30 seconds to output one verse, it will take around 49 and a half minutes to print the entire song. Come on! I have other fish to fry, I can't wait here for that long! Remember, if you spot a mistake, you're able to delete the channel! That sells it, I'm waiting. Throttle, if I notice one mistake, Bye bye channel! Ten minutes later. Don't think I've given up yet, Trunnel One! I never give up! Never! Ten more minutes later. So. Sired! What, after 20 minutes? Anyway, ready to give up? No! Never! Ten minutes later, even though he should have noticed at this point that this is a loop. Aw, he's so cute when he's sleeping. Wake! Ah! Do you mind? Yes. You already know what I am going to say. The rest of the minutes later. Well, it seems like you wasted all your time for nothing. Shut it! There's one more bottle left. guessing game what I want a number guessing game now or else <sighs> the first thing this program does is ask the user to input something if they can put the ASCII character of 1 with the value of 49 they are taken to one player mode 
Otherwise, they are taken to two-player mode, which will allow someone to set a number for the player to guess. Your punch has three more commands that I've been hiding from you, partly because I couldn't find a use for them until now. Actually, entirely because I couldn't find a use for them until now. This symbol here is a not, which will pop a value off the stack and, if it is zero, it will push a one, otherwise it will just push a zero. In this program, it's used to make the counter go to the left instead of the right if the value winds up being zero. In one player mode, since guessing a number you set for yourself is boring and pointless, a number must be generated randomly. The question marks make the counter move in a random direction. Basically, once this area is reached, it randomly moves around picking up numbers until it eventually leaves. It then adds them all up. This way of random number generation doesn't have a cap, and it will probably land on some numbers more than others, so it's pretty terrible. Regardless of the amount of players, the answer will have 64 added to it, and it will be placed at the coordinates of 64, 24. It's placed there so we have it for later, and it's placed at that specific coordinate because A, its numbers are easily multiplied to, and B, it's out of the way. After all of that, finally the game begins. The user is asked for a number, and the ASCII character at 64, 24 is then pushed onto the stack. The number 64 is subtracted from it, and it is compared to what the user typed. If they type the correct answer, they are told that they are in fact correct, and the program ends. If they chose wrong, it then checks if the answer is greater than the user's input by using the grave accent character, which is a character so useless you've probably never noticed it on your keyboard. Or maybe you have, I don't know. It then tells them whether they were too high or too low, and then it asks the user for a number again. Now you may be asking, Hey, Truddle, why are you using another interpreter? I thought you liked the last one! And the one before that. Why are you so inconsistent? That's because the first one couldn't use the GNP commands correctly, and the other one couldn't get input. Also, this one is very fast, outputting 99 bottles of beer in just a few seconds. You could have done it faster! <laughs> Calm down! Anyway, want to play the number guessing game? Yeah! Finally, someone wants to play a game with me! I mean, I'm only doing this to make sure you did it right. Remember, if you mess up, bye bye channel! This is gonna be easy. Anyway, I pick one. What? Too low? Don't think you won so easily, Trottle. I pick 700. You're awful at this. Too high? Wah! 3.14159265358979333846264338327555. The Funge can't even use decimals. Gah! 180! 200? Hey, now we're getting somewhere. It's been lowered to 18 numbers. I'm gonna have the correct numbers soon. Ha ha ha! 17, incorrect, guesses, little. 190? Correct! Congratulations! And you didn't notice any mistakes. What? Why are you congratulating me? You're supposed to hate me! Which I do. Hey, that's mean. Why'd you say that? You know what? I challenge you to a fight. I'm... A disembodied narrator. Fine, then I'll fight this person. What? What's going on? I'm giving you five minutes to prepare, and I'm allowing Trottle to help you. Because I'm not normally this nice, Trottle is only able to help by using that big fudge thingy Bob, and nothing else. And if any of you chicken out or use something else, I'm deleting this channel and there's nothing you can do about it. What are we gonna do? The angry omelet's gonna kill me! Don't worry, because we can use the turn-based battle be fudge program. This program is a turn-based battle game. In it, the player plays as Creaturey, and he is battling Junior Troopa. Creaturey is able to attack, which will deal 1 damage, use a magic attack, which will deal 2 damage, and heal, which heals 1 hit point. Junior Troopa, that's me, we know, can attack, heal, and defend. When defending, he is immune to attacks. However, when you use magic while he's defending, it stops him from defending and does no damage. The player, who plays as Creaturey, has 3 magic points, and when a spell is cast, he loses one of them. If the player tries to cast a spell and has no magic points, they instead take one damage. Yeah, that's all well and good, but how am I supposed to cast magic? Using this. It's a creature stick! Yeah! Now, because explaining this program in detail would make this video way longer than it already is, I'll just show you where the features in it are located. This part displays text. Not exciting. Moving on. After displaying the program's title, it puts some values off to the side, which will be used to store both characters' HP, the player's MP, and whether or not the enemy is defending. Then it asks the user for input. If the player types an A, they will attack. If the player types an M, they will cast magic. And if the player types an H, they will heal. Next, it randomly chooses an attack for Junior Trooper to use, and then it uses it before the game displays the player's HP and MP, and then it lets Creaturey attack again. 
When either character has 0 or less HP, it shows a you died or you win message, depending on who's the one at 0 HP. Also, when the program counter leaves the bounds of the program, it appears at the other side, like Pac-Man does when he goes through a tunnel. WHY DIDN'T YOU MENTION THIS YET?! It was never needed, Bifunge. I, I mean, before I made this program, which wraps around from here to here. Okay, explainy time is over. Now it's time for battle. But you said five m Yeah, you should never listen to what I say. But should I listen to that? It's battle time. Finally, something I'm good at. Yeah, right. Um, I guess I'll just do this. Creature ain't attack! Hey, look! I found a whole stash of dried mushrooms the other day! Blah ha ha! Junior Trooper, huh? Heal! That's it? Just one hit point? I'm just gonna go attack again, I don't know. Creaturey attacks! Alright, Creaturey, brace yourself! This attack will blow yours out of the water! Junior Trooper attacks! What? Only one hit point again? Is this working? I don't think this is working. Creaturey attacks! Again! Do something else next time! Wow, you're persistent! Let's L. <sighs> really, Creaturey? Six times in a row. Okay, six times? Six! This is getting really annoying. I mean, six times. That seemed to be a bit excessive. You know what? I'm using this new skill that I learned when Truttle rudely hit me with that falling line. Junior Tropa! Defend! What's the difference between now and before? Creature A attacks! It does zero damage. Hey! Lamezilla! I couldn't feel that at all! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Junior Troopa! Defends again. That was a waste of a turn. Oh no, what do I do? Oh wait, I forgot I had this. Abracaritri! Creature uses magic! Junior Troopa loses his defense! Mark my words, Creaturey! I'll get my own wand one day, and on that day, you'll be in a world of hurt! Junior Trooper heals! Creaturey uses magic again! Junior Trooper takes two damage this time! Junior Trooper attacks! Is this the last attack? I'm getting kinda sick of this. Is it? Is it? Is it? Yes, it is! Junior Trooper has been defeated! Creaturey wins! Congratulations, Creaturey! Yay! Man, I shouldn't have sold him a port a box port. And what was the point of that battle? Nothing! Anyway, is he alright? I sure hope so. I mean, I would hate for you to go to jail. Yeah, me too. But just remember, he started it. So, wanna go get lunch at Five Guys? Sure! Why not? Can I come too? Yeah, sure! Yay! I'm included for once! 